You may disagree, but up to me, it's a fact. It's paying running backs, it ain't no fun in that. Yeah, the sermon about to start, so I hope you know your stats. And if Kev get it wrong, then Rashad gon' have his back with the facts. Matter of fact, all we do is say win. Wins when wins, congregation say amen. Trades, debates, wins, losses, the latest news, bro. Prophet Kev speak, you got him saying hallelujah. I'm welcome to Preach Kev, Preach with Rashad. We are the prophets. Here's another episode, another sermon coming at you from Wildcard Sports here on Wildcard TV. Uh, Rashad, what's going on, bro? I'm just checking the Twitter, man. The NFL going crazy with the news today. Uh, yeah, all day long. <laughs> somebody hit my phone about somebody getting tagged. Uh, we are joined by Lauren Gunn, uh, co-host of a Blue Hardwood Park podcast and co-host of The Gun Show. I think that's on Locker Room. Is that with, who? Who's that with? The gunshot is with my brother, Grant Gunn, and yeah, so sometimes we'll do live live stuff on Locker Room, and then other other times we'll just do like a weekly podcast that drops on Spotify and, and Apple Music, all the all the main ones. All right, welcome to the show. Uh, are, are you a WWE fan? No relation to Billy Gunn? <laughs> no, 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 man. Brian, my co-host Brian would kill me if I said I'm not the biggest WWE fan, but no, no relation there. <laughs> Uh, the smoking guns, Billy and Bart. <laughs> I know, I know. I should, you know, I should, I should, I should be, I should be. That's funny. All right, so we're we're going to we're uh, glad to join the show. Uh, Rashad already talked about the NFL news and how uh, you know everything was coming out, and I think we finally got the answer. We've been debating for the last two years. The to Dallas- tag or not to tag? That is the question. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the Dallas Cowboys uh, finally. Uh, decided to pay Dak Prescott. Now, I know a lot of people looking at his contract and, and, and asking, is he worth it? So, you know, I, 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 hate, to, I hate to ask that question because we know <laughs> the most position, the best value position is quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Uh, yet, it's like the market is what it is, and you can't you can't beat that. So, uh, we'll, just go, we'll, just, we'll start it off. Uh, y- y'all finally, are we, are we happy that Dak Prescott paid? Finally, like, like, like what, what is our move right now? I mean, so for me personally, when I'm looking at this situation is how do you like, yeah, 40, 40 plus is that's a lot per year. And, and, and I get that argument of it, but like you said, the quarterback is one of the, the most important position on your team. And so if you sometimes, whether he's, whether you feel he's worth it or not, you have to also weigh the cost and benefit of, okay, so if we want to move on from Dak and we go trade him or we have to go look for another QB. Like what does that position put like, what, what is our position then moving forward? And so for me, it's like, you know what, if you go pay him, I mean, the team believes in him, the team loves him. And so at least you now have your, your future is is certain, or maybe, maybe whether you get to the zero or not is another question. Like everybody's waiting for that, but um, to now have this solidified, you've got a, a group of guys that are under contract for, you know, X number of years. And so hopefully you can try to get some momentum and, and make something happen. So personally, I'm excited about it. I know some people are like, he's not worth it. Should have traded him, but that's where I'm at. I mean, it really just boils down to what other option did they have? Yeah. Because there really was no other option. What, Red rifle. Mar- Mariota, <laughs> Cam Newton, Andy Dalton, not mm-hmm. very appealing. And then you look at everybody kept throwing Russ out there. Mm-hmm. They, would have, they would have to be – you would have to mortgage your entire future <laughs> to, to get Russ. So mm-hmm. you were damned if you did, damned if you don't, because if you trade three first-rounders to Seattle and give up Dak, how are you going to replace your agent O-line or mm-hmm. replace stuff on defense when you have too many holes on defense? So, no you know, they, they were just stuck regardless. So when you it's consider the circumstances – he was worth it. That's, that's the only reason he's worth it because based upon circumstances, you have no other option to go to except paying him. You can't redo time and go pay mm-hmm. him two years ago. So the market is what it is. He's the next guy up. Next guy probably to resets the market. So you got to pay what you have to pay. And so he's worth it in that sense. Yeah. I, I, I feel like I feel like they, they did play their hand and you know I feel like they should have went ahead and did the move when when golf got paid and Carson Wentz got paid, because I mean at the time you you could have did a contract early when he you know what is a what fourth round pick so after year two or three you could have gone and tried to extend him for you know for a contract so I, I'm looking at the numbers and you know it is crazy what he's making I think he's getting like sixty six million guaranteed seventy five million in year one uh but somewhere in the nineties for like you know total guarantee fully guaranteed 
Um, but you look at the number. So four years, one hundred sixty. So for the four, first four years, he made two point seven million. So we we put all all, the, all that together. He's only making twenty million a year. Now, is it Dak fault that they didn't win when he was so discounted? You know, I mean, I thought he played very well, definitely more than his contract at the time. You know, stated so. Now he's making forty million. Not a question. And it's, it's bad that the narrative is going to be like this. Mm-hmm. Oh, he getting paid forty million. Why is he win a Super Bowl? Like, why can't he get to the? You know, I, I hate that for quarterbacks because yeah, they make all the money. They make they touch the ball every play, but at the same time, it's like he can't stop the other team from scoring thirty. Or right. is Tyron Smith going to play sixteen games? They just like just this just crazy examples of like where the Cowboys have to go. So. I'm not. I'm. I'm glad he got paid, and mm-hmm. I, I feel like Dallas should have done this a long time ago. Like they were sitting there trying to see if he's the guy, but like like Rashad said, like Cam Newton, Mariota, like you you didn't really have no options, and mm-hmm. you know even at pick number ten, what quarterback are you going to take? You know, right. so hey, it is what it is. I mean, he he got paid, I, and like Rashad said, I think I think that, that makes him that makes him worth worth the contract. It's just you know what are, as like now is like what's next. Shout out to Drake, uh, you know. So uh, so you know what what I guess what is next, uh, Lauren? If you want if you want to if you want to say like what you think the next steps for the Cowboys are. I mean, number one, it's you got to improve that defense, and so I don't I don't know who they're going to take at that that tenth spot. I would. I wouldn't be opposed to them getting their hands on Micah Parsons, but I don't think that's going to happen. And so I, for me, the number one thing is defense. I know some people are are talking about how the offense like Dak will have his problems or he won't quite get the job done. But just like you said, he can't control if, if the other team's putting up 30 or, or 40 or 50. And so it's like, that's a huge, huge problem. So uh, while that offensive line is aging, I feel like, Every single game, everyone is just pulling their hair out watching this defense and watching the secondary just massive holes. And it's just it's easy for opposing teams. So for me, I'd like to see them make significant strides to improve that defense um, and just kind of go from there. Well, Dak already saved them 15 million for the salary cap this year. So they better use that wisely along with their draft picks. So you're at 10. That should be a spot for. Offensive line because the offensive line is starting to age, or you got to go defense. That those are your only two options. No more CD Lambs and Gallops. <laughs> no, you you got enough pass catchers. I don't care about tight ends. Anything you need to go offensive line or defense. So best player available for either spot. I mean, depending upon what mock draft you're following, uh, Penae Sewell will be there. You may have Slater there. Uh, defense is all over the board because this is not a defensive heavy draft. No pass rushers. Or, I mean, so yeah. you got to just take the best available for the the defense and kind of see what happens from there. You know, Jerry's paid everybody, so you, you're kind of cap strapped the next couple of years. So you mm-hmm. have to you have to hit on every pick. Cooper, right. Smith, Zach, Martin, Zeke, Dak. Now, I mean, you've they they love to pay their guys, so you you invest a lot of money into these guys. So from now on, you got to just start doing what you've done before and hit on some draft picks. Because for a while, they were nailing the draft picks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, you know, you know, it's crazy. I, I feel like I feel like we all we talked about this for a long time, like the decisions Cowboys made. Uh, Lawrence, if you don't know, like we we our number one rule in, in in NFL is we don't pay running backs. Like when you when you leave this show, you're gonna remember that we like that's that's <laughs> that's something that we don't like in every in every situation that comes up that we like since we've been doing this show, like every time it always had come up and. And like now it's like, are right, you pay Zeke? All right, he didn't look that great last year. Now the offensive line is aging. So can he, you know, can can he be that old guy he used to be? You got uh Tyron Smith not being as, you know, what he was. Demarcus Lawrence, his contract, Jalen Smith being rumored getting traded already. Like it, it's a lot of decisions that like they all and it was what's crazy is I feel like they all is all gonna go back to Dak and they're gonna blame him for everything. But it's, it's like, true. Man. You can't, yeah. You because know. Because I think they should draft a corner this this draft, like mm-hmm. I mean, Patty Sertan for Sertan, yeah. And then you put him back with um with with Diggs, but had that Bama you know secondary, and or you get JC Horn for South Carolina. But at the same time, it's like, well, you had Brian Jones, like mm-hmm. and you chose to pay the other guys instead. So it's you know, I, I guess mm-hmm. it's more hindsight speaking. But um, is is there, is there one is there one decision that you was like, man, why why did we do this? Um, I want to say. I'd say maybe the Jalen Smith when we paid Jalen Smith because 
I don't know. I just felt like there are certain areas where that money could be used elsewhere. I With Zeke, it was kind of at least my perception of it is, I mean, you don't what, – what were you just like going to not pay Zeke or pay or trade Zeke? I just didn't expect them to do that. And so I feel like when they extended – Jalen Smith and or and when they paid Demarcus Lawrence, it was kind of like okay, well now you're you are like strapped, like you are you're kind of stuck. And so I don't know, I kind of go back and forth on those two, but at the same time, like that's our defense, and we can, we need defense. And so it's like if you're for me, it's like if you're getting paid and you're not doing, you're not performing well consistently enough, then that's where I have a problem. I think on the basketball side of things, that's where a lot of people are having the problem with Porzingis right now. And so. For me, that's where it kind of comes in. But I think I agree with you completely. If Dallas doesn't improve overall or, or they're not performing well enough as a team, everyone is going to blame it on Dak. Everyone is going to look to Dak and say, look at all that money you're getting paid and you're not doing anything. And so that is going to suck because it's absolutely going to happen. But um, I don't know. Hopefully they can get creative and again, again just start with that defense and, and go from there. But uh, I don't know. Hey. Or so you know, you know, so as a as a I'm a Viking fan, so as a Viking fan, they will blame everything on your quarterback. <laughs> if, if he didn't take that, if he didn't take that big deal, we could have got a guard. Like that was gonna change the, the landscape of the whole game, whatever. But like that's that's what right. happened. I just thought about this. I was like, uh so so they they like you said about the Zeke part where they drafted him with top five. So it's kinda like you had to pay him, right? I was like, Well, it, it's the NFL gods gave the Cowboys the But he chance. jumped the line, he didn't mess everything up. He did. He did jump the line. Well, he went a year a year ahead, didn't he? That, that, that was true. But like the NFL, the NFL guys gave the Cowboys the chance to draft Jalen Ramsey. Then they was like, "All right, we'll give you Byron Jones," and then you let him go too. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and, now, and now you have the hope say if Sertan come to you at ten. Like that's yeah. that just funny to me. Like I just, I just think about like if if for whatever reason the Cowboys don't get the secondary, you know, together. It's like, well, we gave you chances. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Funny. No kidding. That's yeah, it's their, their money management is terrible. Though. That's all yeah, it, it, it's it the is. money management. That's funny. Jerry right. said, "Open a checkbook. <laughs> so I'll sign, Check, put, put any number you want. Jones. Put any number you want on the outside. Don't you? <laughs> That's funny. All right, let's, let's let's move on to the uh, to to the same same state, same uh, city, Dallas Mavericks. Um, so off air, we talked about the U Haul Award from last last uh, week uh, show. And I said that the, you know the Dallas Mavericks have to make a move to keep Luka happy because at the end of the day, it's all about making Dirt, uh, Luka better than Dirk Nowitzki. Can he have a better career than that? And if he does, that means Dallas has been balling for the you know for the next ten to fifteen years. Um, so, w- what is the state of the Mavericks right now as they go into the second second season, uh, you know, second part of the season, and uh, you know, looking to win the division, looking to make the playoffs, and and, and you know, repeat at least uh, last year performance when you when you battle in the Clippers in the playoffs. Yeah, so I think going into the second half of the season, as the the trade di- deadline is approaching uh, March twenty fifth, I think they absolutely have to make a move because they have underperformed this this season so far, and uh, they've been on a solid stretch through February and then even to start March, and so I I do feel like they think that they have some momentum and they're starting to figure things out. Um, I've talked to some people who do think that Porzingis might have been brought back a little bit too early and they're just still kind of waiting on him to get into the flow of things and then maybe then the team will look a lot different. But my perspective is they absolutely need to make a move. And I don't know if they will because sometimes you can't just will a move to happen. And if you're looking at the guys who are really available via trade, um, if you do want to take a significant step, well, you have to give up assets and we don't exactly have a whole lot of assets. And so... In that regard, Dallas might be stuck a little bit and they might just continue to run it with this group. Um, but as far as like, I think the Southwest division and even the standings right now, um, I think that da- there are a couple of, of improvements that Dallas could make to try and climb up those standings a little bit. Like we're, we're just right behind San Antonio right now. Um, I believe they are what 18 and 14 where, yeah, they're 18 and yep. 14 We're 18 and 16. And so San Antonio has exceeded expectations this year and we have under performed like I said so I think whether San Antonio maybe falls back down to earth a little bit maybe we kind of you know get it together and and climb up a little bit maybe one of those two things can happen and we can start working our way up yeah it's gonna be interesting over the next two weeks basically with the the trade deadline coming up because the Spurs they've been in rumors will they acquire somebody will they just bail on the season Mm -hmm. and of course the Mavs are always in trade discussions because 
they never sign anybody in free agency. So, I mean, right. there's a topic for another day, but the Mavs have been missed on free agents for like the last, what, 10 years, if not longer, because they've missed on any guy that was elite at that time. Mm-hmm. They couldn't get him. And then when you did get DeAndre Jordan, he got kidnapped. So, you know, <laughs> just. Don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the, the Mavs, even guys that are from Texas, like Bosch and some other guys, they just never go to the Mavs. I'm not sure right. why. No state income tax, been a well-run franchise. Mark Cuban's just like Jerry Jones. He don't mind opening the checkbook up for you. Mm-hmm. So, you know, but I want to see what happens. Like, you know, people think, oh, the depot could be a target. You had other names floating around that the Mavs could um, could target. So I'm not sure what they'll do. And the Spurs, will they abandon the season and just kind of plan for next year? Or will they say, we're going to just keep, we've been overachieving by most standards this year. Let's ride it out, see how it plays. And then I guess during the offseason, they'll try to do a sign and trade with DeMar and those guys. So I think it's going to come down to the, the very last few games with both teams sitting at 18 wins currently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it uh, it's I mean, it's going to get close to me. The reason the reason that I'm so dead set on they absolutely have to make a move is because this entire season was supposed to be about making your case for free agency, because like you said, every single year, year after year, it's a swing and a miss. And so. Everyone is looking at Dallas saying, okay, well, before you were pitching Dirk and you're not going to be throwing lobs to Dirk. He's not going to be really playing any defense. So what free agents would necessarily want to go play with Dirk? I love Dirk. I'm not trying to disrespect him, but Luka is a completely different ball game. And so everyone is sitting here saying people want to play with Luka. People can win with Luka. But then when you come out in your season where you've got all this money to go spend in the off season and you're underperforming, that's not a good case to make to free agents. And so that's why I'm like, March 25th is approaching. There might be some situations where you can maximize and maybe like get another guy for maybe under his value. Like I think John Collins is a great option and that they absolutely should make that move if they know what's good for him. But I don't think they'll give up what it's going to take to get him. So I don't know what they are going to do, but free agency is going to be tough because if we continue at this trend that we're at, or God forbid we miss the playoffs, free agency is not going to look very good. Yeah, the, the Collins move would be good for them, but at the same time, I think they might have to wait until the offseason to get that and just throw the bag at him and he'll leave the Hawks because the Hawks already made other moves to the kind of backdoor that with right. the compelling trade, the Gallinari trade. They already kind of have a log jam up front, so right. paying Collins for the Hawks wouldn't make any sense. And so they'll kind of ignite that Trey Luca thing some more too. He'll go from Trey to Luca. And if you start making all star games or putting up crazy numbers, mm-hmm. it'd be like, why didn't Trey make Collins better? So that's something to keep an eye on. Um, maybe Kevin Love. I mean, he's been injured a lot lately, but um, if he's getting paid so much money. And I think Luca comes up in another year or two. So you might mm-hmm. want to try to get that off the books before you have to hand Luca the big paycheck. Um, exactly. Maybe Larry Nance. I mean, I'm sure the Cavs. I want to bail on some guys at some point. I mean, it's, it's the Cavs. They got to bail at some point on some of these guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, there are definitely some guys on the Cavs uh, that I would I would like to get my hands on. Torian Prince, I've heard is available. Um, I've heard that, or I, I read too that that the Cavs are fielding calls on Larry Nance, or at least they're they're maybe they're receiving calls on Larry Nance. Um, but I I believe that I've talked to uh, James Laffrey, who does the Everything Cavaliers podcast. He talks about how much Cleveland values Larry Nance and yes they got Jared Allen so I'm not sure what that means for Larry Nance's future or timeline with the team but I don't know that we have the assets to get Larry Nance but as much and as much as I also hate to say it I do think that Kevin Love might be a move that Dallas does because again you don't have a lot of assets they're trying to get off of Kevin Love and even if you get another injury prone big man I know everyone that's like if you're if you're having trouble with KP's availability Kevin Love is not the answer but again Dallas is stuck like they need to add talent and so they might just do it it would not surprise me at all if they traded for Kevin Love wouldn't be thrilled but at the same time I'd be like well at least we made a move so <laughs> it's like eh. but see I want to know what they would give up because they are in that weird spot where Porzingis is making money but injured. You have a Claver, but you don't want to trade Claver. So now it's what Johnson Richardson, who you just got. You need a defender because Luca's not the best defender. So Hardaway, like you know, you're starting yeah. to get into well, to weird keep, territory. You keep Hardaway though because you got to yeah. start from the bench. Like it's so, just, so now, is so now it's like, what what do you do? Yeah. I know I saw a rumor on Twitter they may chase out the Fournier. I'm like, why don't they go after Fournier and trade Richardson or something like that? That makes no sense at all. You need a defender. You don't need more scoring. You yeah. need somebody who can rebound or protect the rim. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No kidding. You know. Oh, go ahead. Oh well, I was just gonna say, um, I. I 
my thing, one of my biggest frustration, fr- frustrations with Dallas this season has been the past off season. They made all these moves to improve defensively overall as a unit and they're not playing the defensive guys. And and I see why. I understand that Carlisle's like, James Johnson, you make too many mistakes. Wes Awundu, you can't stretch the floor. You mess up our spacing. You can't hit the three. Josh Green, you're too young. Your game's just not quite there yet. I get it. I get it. But we traded Seth Curry, and, and I still stand by the move. You can't, to me, you can't say hindsight 2020, like, oh, well, that was a bad move. I, I still stand by the move, but... Um, we're just, Josh Richardson is not living up to the defensive, like what we needed him to do. And so we have taken a huge step back offensively and the defense hasn't improved at all. And so for me, it's, you have to do something to address that problem. And I'm personally, I like Josh Richardson, but I'm in the camp of, or taking the position of, I just don't know that he's right for this system. And so if they decide to move on from anyone, I would 1000% move on from Jay Rich before I move on from Tim, because Tim has shown the ability to, uh, kind of be this uh, microwave off the bench or step into that starting role and do it. And so I, I would like him to come off the bench because I think having that depth is is good. But Josh Richardson being the the secondary next to Luca is, to me, that's just not working. And that's, I think, with James Johnson contract and Josh Richardson, there are moves that can be made. I just don't know if they'll they'll make the tough decision to make them. It might be that Carlisle effect. Carlisle, you either with him or you're not. He can, right. burn, people, he can, he can, he can burn people out, or you're going to flourish with Carlisle. It's, it's one of those weird – I think he's a great coach. He's, I think he's a future yeah, Hall of Fame, but, he, but he's a he's one of those guys that where you, when you're with him, this guy's career takes off or this guy just starts to look terrible and they get benched. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's I, true. I was just going to say, like I remember like we were talking about like after the draft, I was like, man, Dallas had – like one of the best drafts because I like I like uh, even Tyler Bay. Like I thought adding him and Josh Green, adding Richardson and, and Jane Johnson, we got we got some guys, some rough riders because that's what the Clippers series missed was like those guys who can who can play tough. Like this, mm-hmm. another, I was like, oh, that's perfect. And then they you know replaced Seth with uh with a Tyrell from Stanford. So I was like, you the, every everything on paper like management was did a great job. Like, I was like. That was comedian Rashad. Like Luca about to win MVP. Like this is easy. Like mm-hmm. easy, easy money. Uh, and it's like, like you said, the defense they just not playing them. And you know, and now you see why he kind of underperforming because if, if Josh Richardson, who I thought you know he he's a, he one of those like like a really good role player guys like who can do every single thing. He just don't do anything elite. And I was mm-hmm. like, man, he would he would help Luca out a lot because he can take the best the best wing player. Let Luca, you know, let Luca off that night. Just kind of similar to Clay Thompson and, and Curry. And I was like, well, all right, he's maybe he maybe he's not Clay Thompson defense, but he can do something. And uh, you're right. If you're gonna move off somebody, that's why you keep hearing the Depot rumors all the time. Dude, Depot been rumored to every damn team since <laughs> the last two years. Like, it's like true. Is, he, is he going to Miami or is he going to Dallas? Like, I need to know. Like, this is <laughs> I'm I'm getting tired of the Depot rumors. But mm-hmm. sure, at, at this point, he might be a Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Who, Honestly. That Maybe might, that might be a, that might be a good move actually, but yeah, I, I don't know where he's going. I really, I really wish he get traded so we can stop. And how, how I need him to sign a long contract so we can get people out of here. Like, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you're right. everything. Everything you said like was right. Like, I just what is it? And, and like, what what it, what is going to be that move? So, the Kevin Love, the Kevin Love, the John Collins. I didn't think about that one. That actually because for whatever reason, I feel I feel like you might not have to get like you said. You might have to give up a lot because. They want to get rid of him anyway. Cause I was talking, me and Rashad were talking about this. Cause I hate Atlanta. Like, like I hate, I hate the whole, like being from Georgia. I hate the whole decision getting rid of Luca for Trey. I, I, me and Rashad do agree that Luca fits better in Dallas. Trey fits better in Atlanta. But it's like Atlanta, you never had that type of player come through, your, you know, and you had him. And then right. like you know, you sign Gallinari, Rondo. Trey for Capella. I'm like, what are these moves you doing? So <laughs> now John Collins shoot threes like it ain't nothing. Dunk on everybody. So like that's 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 like a, a great high energy player that you know can can flourish in, in the Rick Carlisle system and and not hit the bench. You know, hope not, you know, hope not if you trade for him. But he yeah. might bench yourself, get some more PEDs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you all are, I, mean, <laughs> I didn't. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not touching that I mean, one. Yeah, we. <laughs> Man, he might bench himself. <laughs> yeah, we're not. We're going to, you know, we're going to end up in the Dallas Mavericks talk right there. Um, right. 21 and 10, 3.0 PEDs. <laughs> Chill. All right. <laughs> hey, so let's move on to the uh, news over the weekend. Uh, uh, Blake Griffin uh, to the Brooklyn Nets. We kind of talked about it as far as like we knew he was going to go somewhere. Uh, I got a little, I got a little, um, 
lash back a little bit when I, when I said this. I said, uh, wherever Blake Griffin goes, he's not going to change that team's like trajectory. Like if if he, for example, if Blake, if if you think Dallas Mavericks is a second round team, actually, let's just say that, right? And mm-hmm. Blake Griffin goes there, he doesn't make you a championship team. That's basically what I'm saying. Like he's not move, he's not moving. Whatever you say that you think that team is going to go, that's probably where they're going to go with or without Blake Griffin. So he goes to the Brooklyn Nets, who most people have in the finals. Is he going to change that outcome? Probably not. They probably go into the finals regardless. So, uh, y'all, y'all thoughts on Blake Griffin going to Brooklyn? Um. So personally, when I saw that that was where he was going, expected to go, I was kind of like, Ugh. I mean, I can't say I'm surprised, but I'm also disappointed. I tweeted out that I would have really liked to see him go to Golden State because I think the key for Br- Blake Griffin moving forward, um, I mean, he has made made he's made money. But um, from a a longevity, the longevity of his his career, I think it would have been really great for him to go somewhere like Golden State where he could kind of reconstruct his game, put more of an emphasis on outside shooting to where him not dunking is not a problem. Um, I swear if I see him dunk in a Brooklyn Nets uniform, I'm going to lose it. But um, the game, hard and long. It will be. It will, it will be. It will be. Yeah. But um. But yeah, I think he could have. He could have really improved as a shooter there, and they've got a great training development staff. Like they, I mean, KD got injured there. Clay Thompson, Steph, like they've all had major injuries there, and they've all. I mean, Clay, we're still waiting for him to come back, but Steph is looking just fine. And so, um, I don't know if that's going to be the same for every single guy, but I think I thought that that would have been a really great place for him to go. Um, and with Brooklyn, like I'll be happy to see to see Blake get a, a ring if he does, but it's kind of just like. To me, it, it kind of gives like an overkill vibe. It's like, okay, you know, good for you, but really, Brooklyn, yeah. <laughs> they didn't they didn't need you. Like you, do, I don't know. That, and that's like a personality, just kind of like a different, different. You do what you want to do, kind of thing. But um, I kind of wish he would have gone somewhere like Golden State, where I feel like he could have been a, a part of that team, really, and had more of an impact and really kind of improved. But I it just, it is what it is, I guess. I mean, I think the move was perfect for Blake. I mean, I think he would kind of operate as their Draymond Green type. You know, you're a small ball defender. He's known to – I think he's an underrated passer, but he's known to be able to move the ball, hit mid-range. He'll be open all the time all with KD, Kyrie Harden. So you can you can bump that three-point percentage up by a couple of points just by being open. So True. Um, I just think – for what they're paying for him, if he helps you win two games, like or he just plays some good defense, he's worth it. He only getting he only making a couple million dollars. They're like two million dollars, I think. So it's not like they're paying him a whole lot of money. Right. He can re- he can restore his value and maybe make a few more million dollars on uh, his next deal next year. But I think it works out for him. I think their only dilemma will be how do you close games? You're gonna have Kyrie, you're gonna have Harden, you're gonna have Durant. Now you have to figure out is this a Joe Harris type of game or do we need Bruce Brown in the game? Do we need Blake, Jeff Green, DeAndre Jordan even? Like, how do you close games? Because at some point, based upon seeding, you will run into a Joel Embiid and you're going to need the biggest body possible to handle him. So mm-hmm. De- DeAndre Jordan might have to just get torched for a little bit. I don't know. That's exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> I, I, I don't even know if Blake can handle MB uh, MB is a monster this year for sure. Mm-hmm. Or at some point, you might run into Giannis. I mean, you can you can build a wall, but at some point, it's gonna be a couple of games. He'll break through that wall a couple of times. So does Blake stop that? Does Jim Green stop that? I mean, I just want to see how their closing five will be, or like they're the guys they trust in those high pressure moments. I mean, Drummond's still on the market. You know, Cleveland. We just talking, you know, they're holding him hostage. They need to just go ahead and let the man go. You talk about overkill. <laughs> like Drum, Drummond. Drummond is the one who controls the NBA right now. If Drummond goes to the Lakers, Lakers if he goes to the Lakers, that's going to save their season because AD a little he, – he tripping this year. But if he goes to the Nets, I mean, you might as well go ahead and just lock yeah, it in. Put that in. That's, that's you might go yeah, you can much. drop your your four hundred one k on next one in the title. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm about to say the the only thing I don't think for for uh, Blake Griffin in this this sense is with Kevin, Kevin Durant in and out of the lineup and Kyrie in and out of the lineup is like his stats going to like with, with playing with James Harden your stats is going to inflate anyway. So like you said, he always going to be open and without Kevin Durant t- you know shooting twenty shots and Kyrie shooting twenty shots and like in and out of the lineup as long as Blake Griffin plays every game. He's probably he's probably going to have a a fifteen five and five type season the rest of the way 
just because they're going to need him. You know, he's just going to be happy. You in Detroit, <laughs> you're losing. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be happy, man. You finna Don't get five that, more yeah. points. You gonna get five more points off being happy. <laughs> that, that's two dunks in a free throw just off being happy. Come on, man. <laughs> this, this man, this man was in Detroit. You only made the playoffs one time, and that was like a forty-one to forty-one season. You had the COVID nineteen last man. Blake just gonna be happy me in New York. I mean, I mean, I'm not, I'm not ducking another time. Not one more game. In Detroit, when I get my guess somewhere else, first play, it's it's coming, and I I I gotta watch the first game they play because I know he's he's gonna duck in it. Like you yes, can, whatever the whatever the prop bet on that, go ahead, go ahead and book that. For real, that's just ridiculous. Yeah, but yeah, drum it, drum it to drum has been rumored to Lakers and Nets. That is an overkill for real. Like either way, it's overkill. I mean, I guess Lakers gotta make a move now. But mm-hmm. That's that's just that's just way that's just way too much. Like people, like because Drummond top top six top seven center in my in my eyes. So it's like you add now that. He, now he's top five. Yeah, I mean I would just put seven just so nobody won't so nobody won't leave me alone. That's why <laughs> that's why I said it. <laughs> that's why I went. Man, that high. <laughs> any, anybody talking about go back and go have a seat. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh man. All right. Let's uh, let's, let's let's go into our last segment of the night, the three and D segment. Uh, yeah, we did we did this before. Uh, defend the statement or not. Uh, we got three statements here. Um, you know, go, going to the uh, All Star game, uh, we had to just had All Star weekend. Um, LeBron and Curry played together for the first time, and that was you know that was special to see just to watch them play together. I mean, outside of Team USA, we have never seen them play on you know together, right? Um, so defend this statement if if somebody wants to. LeBron and Curry will be the best duo of all time if they were teammates. Hmm. Well, that's okay. That's tough because I feel like I could talk in circles about this over and over again. I think my biggest thing with LeBron is I've always said he's not the greatest. He's not the best shooter. In my opinion, Steph is the greatest shooter of all time. So you put those two together. If you put them on a team together, you can surround those guys with athletic dudes who can defend anyone else. And so if you, I mean, there are ways to make that work. So I think if they were head like the head of a, a team like a two-headed snake on a team I mean that could be they could be one of the greatest duos of all time I think if you put them if you're like oh well what if they played like two on two with versus like Jordan and Kareem well okay I mean that's not the conversation right. so I think that they could be the best duo of all time because they are so complimentary um but that's a really tough statement um I, I mean you know what I'll say I, I do think that they could be the best duo of all time I'll, I'll defend that one no, <laughs> no. You think so? First of all, LeBron controls the ball way too much, so all the moving Steph does that won't work. I mean, then there are only two guys on the fifteen man roster. What else is going to be there? Like, who's going to be your big man? LeBron always has a big man. He he didn't start winning till he had a, a good big man. So whether that's Bosh, a K Love, or a Davis type of guy, you need a big guy. So who's going to be your big guy? Who's going to play defense? Steph ain't playing defense. LeBron play what he feels like. If it, this it 2012 LeBron, well, he locked in. But if this 2018 LeBron, I got you in the fourth quarter, last five minutes. So it depends upon what version you get. But well, I don't care what version you get. They not going to be the best duo. Because <laughs> th- those two together, at any point in their career, it's not, it's not winning more than two titles. Like, he can't even win more than two titles with Dwayne Wade. Steph Curry is smaller and don't play defense. Well, okay. So, all right. So I'm going to defend it a little bit because – all right, so I think the best duo of all time is Shaq and Kobe. All right, so that I mean that's just I mean you, we saw the dominant effect on that one. You got MJ and Pippen, you got Magic Kareem. So that's that that is the category where I think LeBron and Curry could be. They probably if I had to put them on the list, they probably be four behind those three. But all right, Rashad, you, you you said you know they can't you know Wade. We know he was coming down the mountain of his career, right? We said last year, or I said it especially. Anthony Davis is LeBron James' best teammate ever. Like, how you, like we we talking about career wise? Okay, maybe not because he played with Shaq and Wade and all these kind of guys. But we talking about prime. Davis was in his prime, better than Kyrie in his prime, better than Dwayne Wade was coming down, better than Chris Bosh and Kevin Love. So, all right, so you get Steph Curry, who we'll get into this later. Wait, where would you rank him in the top ten list? I mean, he was one of the only, only uh, unanimous MVPs of all time. I mean, like, I think, that's BS, but you we, know, we whatever, whatever it is, he don't have a Finals MVP, but that's also BS. 
because uh, Iggy don't definitely didn't deserve that one. <laughs> but you know that's another conversation another day. But Curry, like 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 Lauren said, is the is the greatest shooter of all time. You see him in three point contests, how he's able to come back, and he just he just on the court. And right now, I was like, man, I want to can Curry do what Dame what Dame Dollar can do, as far as like when people are injured, can he? have a top five, you know, put a team in the top five as a C, you know, and for the Warriors right now, they're right there in the mix of things. And even with Draymond, you know, having a, what, five, five and 10 year, and Wig is uber being inconsistent, the Warriors are still right there. So you put Curry, you put LeBron with anybody, like they could be, you know, they could be a top dude of all time. Like that's just, that's just what it is. I mean, Dave, him and Davis right now, I mean, Outside of Kevin Durant, Harden you know, is the one is the best duo in the league, and they got together and got, got together and won a championship right off the bat. So, um, I might not say they're the best, but shit, top five easily. And yeah, yeah, it's tough because I think to to kind of even push take it a little bit further. I mean, Steph, granted, it's like you said, Steph, the, the the defense isn't isn't really there. But if you have Steph and LeBron on the same team, does it really even matter? Like what, if you're playing other teams, where's their defensive attention going to go? Cause Steph can play off the ball. He's slippery. He'll yep. run around screens and Braun can just score on anybody. So, I mean, even if the defense is there, I mean, or isn't there, I don't know that they need it. And if, if LeBron can get Timothy Mozgov four for $64 million, he can make any big man out there functional. So I, I Fair. think, uh, I think that they would be all right. And I think that they could be a team that would be good enough and win enough together to where people would say they could, they might just be the best duo of all time. But I, I think, I think there's an argument as to why LeBron and AD would be a more complimentary duo than Steph and and LeBron. But as far as winning and and how many titles they could win together, uh, I do think that that's a, a an interesting conversation to have, and and they could be right there. All right, Rashad, give me your, give me how many titles does, does LeBron and Curry have if they if they were teammates for ten years. For ten years, I mean that that depends upon the stage of their career too. And then you gotta still think about if thirty one other teams, like right now, people are gonna be chasing the title too. Like how you got Brooklyn over here chasing the title, you got Luke on the rise, Milwaukee on the rise, Philly over here, Denver, Utah. Like you have so many other teams still chasing that title. There's no guarantee the Clippers. There's no guarantee they even get there just based upon other teams' roster trades, buyouts, drafts. So. I mean, you got you got to give LeBron I, one, but that's probably it. I'm about to say you said get there. You know LeBron getting to the finals. <laughs> that's, I mean, he still, still can lose though. I he mean, might lose. Yeah, yeah, like, like, he, 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 you got to give him one because he'll get there. But as far as winning it, I mean, unless it's All Star game, he's undefeated. But you know, as far as the finals, that's a different story. All right, so you saying one? All right, Lauren, if if they play together ten years, how many how many rings did they get? If they are doing a ten year stretch from let's say age. 24 to 34. I say they win. I'll mm, I'll say two. I was going to say three, but I was like, eh, let's not let's not get ahead of ourselves. I'll say two. I'll give them three. All, You'll all, give them three. All, all the great duels won more than three, so. That's fair. That's at, a good at least point. Three. That's so good point. I, I'll give them. If I got them, if I got them in the top five, probably, they, they probably, they probably, they probably get three. Because outside, outside the three I named, who, who else as far as duo? Um, I mean, I guess you want to say Jerry West and Wilt, but they got one. Uh, I can't think of anybody else right now. That's man, I wouldn't even count that. Man, I'm only counting three point line area into the prison. <laughs> hey, you're right, though. <laughs> man, plus that was hit. That was hit, man. He wouldn't even average fifth no more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <bear with> <laughs> all right, all right. So let's 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 pivot from that, right? Uh, you know, so we watched the All Star game. Um, so I want y'all to pick, you know, from the All Star game. Give me give me a duo you wish would was paired together, like right now in the NBA. I mean, for my very very biased take, I have to say Luca and Jokic. I think that that would be an incredibly fun duo. Uh, the defense is another conversation, <laughs> but it would be really fun. I think uh, a lot of people would like to play with them. Um, so I got to they're, – they're essentially – well, not the same player, but they're so similar in the way that they play. One is just seven feet tall, moves a little bit slower, but they still – they're so, so similar. So I would really like to see them play together. Oh, I already have mine. They reside in Brooklyn, New York, Harden and KD. Okay. How about, uh, I'm going to go with uh, 
I'm gonna go with Dame and Giannis. Like that's a good one. I like that. I, I'm, and both of them are too loyal to ever leave. But if they were to get together, like that's that's. I'm not mad at that. I like I like when guys stay. Yeah, yeah. Everybody too, has to go too, chase. Too. I like when guys stay. But if they yeah. was if they were together, because we know we know Dame has never had that, and Giannis had never had a date. Like that's just two things that they never had. Like they trying to use the Bledsoe and Drew Holiday, but they're not day. You know, at the end of the day, so. And Dame has never had – he only had CJ and LaMarcus Aldridge. Like, he can – he definitely – he definitely would love a Giannis on his team. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, Rashad, I'm, surpri- I'm surprised you didn't say Harden and Embiid because, you know – No, it, it, it's, it, it's already sealed, man. Like, I love a good big and guard combo, but it, it's, it's already sealed. I mean, too him and, to, to, to <laughs> me with him and KD, that's two of the best offensive players ever. All right, let's go into our second our second statement. All right, here we go. This this is a big one. This is a big one, Rashad. <laughs> Luca is a top five player in the NBA. We know he's not. Let's not even start this. <laughs> we know he's not. Okay, I mean, can we, I we, say? We know that top three is LeBron, Durant, and Kawhi, no matter what order you put them in. And your four and five can be whoever you prefer. I mean, I <laughs> like James Harden. I think he's the greatest offensive force we've ever seen. He can get you 60, get you 20 assists. He can hit 10 threes. He can have a zero turnover game, double-double, triple-double, triple single like Draymond. James Harden would do whatever it needs to be done <laughs> to win the game. And based on this season, I'll put Embiid at five. But normally, I'm a, a Davis guy. I mean, what, what Davis does is so versatile. You really can't beat that. Dribble the ball, shoot, defend, can get 27 to 10. But for this year, I'll put Embiid as a top five guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think this year you have to put Embiid as a top five. I agree with that. He's in my list. He's not top five for me just because of recent years. Like I have to take that all into consideration. Um, But my top five is based on I look at their overall ability, their stats, and do they make their teammates better? Not just like what are you good on one end of the ball, but you don't really provide a whole lot to to the rest of the team. So I do think Luke is a top five player because I think there are very few players in the league that have the ability to fill up every area of the stat sheet, but also improve their teammates' shooting numbers, points, uh, anything. And so um, I do think he's top five because he is that dude. And what he, the numbers that he's putting up, nearly a, a 30-point triple-double. So I, 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 I put him there. I give him the nod. All right. So it's so hard. Like <laughs> – so, so, so Rashad was saying Kawhi number three. I pushed him down this year to five for Embiid and Harden. So I, we got the same top five. Uh, Braun and KD is my one and two. Man, Kawhi putting up 27, highest assist total. Rebounds haven't slipped, and he's might, shooting phenomenal across the board. I might, I might, I might still take Harden. Like, like, it's just low, low management would, would kill Kawhi. But yeah, I, I, I saw that. that. Is, but Embiid, yeah. M, M, what Embiid doing right now. He he's on a 2000, 2000 uh Shaq MVP season right now. If you look look at those numbers, like that they pretty identical. Um, but w- where 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 does Luca fall for me? Like it's it's so hard because he having a, a thirty point triple double. Like when Russ did this, we were saying Russ like this this never been done. we've never seen it before, you know outside of guys who seen you know a big O like we have never seen this kind of you know kind of type of talent before and. And Man, that was Luke, just a storyline MVP. Forget right, Russ. Right, and but Luca doing it, and we don't care. Like it's not even like it's like, bro, <laughs> Russ did it, and we didn't care no more. He did it and won MVP. The did next, the next two years, the next two years after that, what did he do? He went from first team All NBA to third, another, yeah. another triple third. double, second yeah. team, another triple double, third team. He put up twenty ten and ten out, and, and <laughs> look at it now. <laughs> he went All Star this year. He, he didn't even get considered for All Star. <laughs> Yo. Nobody is nobody is banging the table <laughs> for the rest of your All Star this year. Nobody didn't even care he went at the game this year. Uh, you are actually right because when we talk about snubs, nobody mentioned Russ at all, and he nobody, he, nobody even cares. He ever like he ever what I think twenty nine and nine like that's nobody cares no more. But yeah, so Luca Luca um that point eight rebound important, but need that triple dunk. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but but what's crazy is like is that when you do these like tier things like. So if, mm-hmm. if if LeBron, LeBron, KD, Kawhi's up there, and like you have to branch off to guards to bigs because it's it, it's it's so hard for me to say like Giannis and AD is like so much better than 
a Jokic or a Luka, like, or even a Curry and Dane. I feel like they're all in the same boat. It's just the fact that, okay, Davis and Giannis is going to be defensive player of the year and score with Curry and Dame and, and Luka and Jokic put up. So it's kind of like when you, uh, I guess, when you tie the defense into it, if you hold that, you know, your, your best player doing everything, like really everything, then 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 that's when you play, all right, Davis is up there. And, and that's when you say, okay, all right, Giannis can't shoot. Can I, can, I, can I have shooters around Giannis? Is that easier to find? Or is it easier to find defensive guys around Luka and Jokic? Like, I guess it's kind of like a more of a team-building thing. But if you had to pick one, like, <clears throat> like we going down the list, I'm like, man, I don't know. I don't even know how to rank it. So I ranked it 6 AD, 7 Giannis. And then I put, like, 8 through 11 tie with Curry, Dame, Jokic, and Luka. But I'm going to put Dame in the top 10 regardless. Like, how – how I'm stack them, they ain't gonna be my top ten. So it's like, and so I feel like Jokic gotta be in there too. So it's like, I'm I'm really gonna leave Luca and Curry out. Like that's just that's just that's just blasphemy. Like <laughs> either way, it's like it's wrong. So I was like, I don't know. But is he top five? If he if he turn up the second half of the season and they get to a three seed, he might he, he, like you know for this season purposes. Like you just change him each and every day, he might can get there. If 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 he turned Dallas around, if they make no moves like you like that. You want to make a move? Let's say they make no moves, and he mm-hmm. carried this team. That's then we had to have a different conversation. Yeah, when I'm looking at at the list, because like you said, there are, I could look at it from a oh, do you play both sides of the ball? And if so, yeah, Luke is probably not in my top five. But I also look at it as if you take this guy away from the team, what does that team look like? How much does that team take a step back with Anthony Davis with with the Lakers? Anthony Davis is is out what do the Lakers look like if you take Harden away from the Nets what do the Nets look like and and it's like okay well we're about evaluating individual players so that logic but with Luka it's how do you o- overall impact your team and so it's tough because on one side it's like without Luka a lot of these guys I mean they wouldn't even know what to do with the ball I mean no disrespect but you need that ball handler to take initiative and Luka is the only guy outside of I mean Jalen Brunson you can make an argument for him but he's the only one that takes initiative and so um, what does that team look like without Luca? And and so that's why I I do give him the nod. But yeah, as far as six, seven, eight, nine, ten, it's all it's all right there. And then the two guys that I'm looking at at my ten spot where I have this guy slash this guy, it's like really ten. Like you think they're ten? You think it, yeah. it's so it's 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 really hard. I don't know that I can as far as differentiating it. it, it there's enough arguments to where I could be like, you know, that's a that's a solid enough argument as to why this guy should be over this guy, but on this hand, if you're looking at it this way, well, then I'd take the, the other way around. And so uh, it's hard. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Um, yeah, my top five, I have to keep that. I'll have Luca around like seven or eight. I think just off of respect, you got to – I would still put Davis at six. And I, out of respect for Giannis, I will give him seven. He can't shoot, bro, for nothing. I mean, I was surprised he made them, them jumpers in the All-Star game, honestly. <laughs> the bait was open. <laughs> I mean, if he, oh if he, if he missed one jumper, Dane Miller or Steph would have been MVP. It's all he had to miss one jumper. But he want to yeah. not be on, on status quo for the game. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I mean, if, if push came to shove and you said just give me a top 10 and cut somebody off, I'll I'll take Curry off. I'll, I'll put Curry at 11. If, if push came to shove, you said give me a top 10 right now. And, and that's tough. Like, this dude is a two-time MVP champion all that kind of stuff but I mean, he's putting up mvp type numbers from 2016 right now yeah. so it's mm-hmm. tough to make that call but look at what everybody else is doing lucas yeah. killing the game Jokic is a big man almost about to do a triple double dame has no help putting up 30 and 8 i mean Giannis because of the playoff failures he putting up mvp numbers again <laughs> the same thing. And, and he won't <laughs> even he won't thing. even get it he won't even get an mvp <laughs> vote or defensive player of the year vote no, Giannis do... might not even make first team All NBA this year. No, uh, yeah, that's actually numbers. not. Yeah, that's that's crazy. That's crazy. I had not. I have not thought about it like that. But, but he, I'm with you. And, and he's they, killing it. Are like, they doing, are they doing first team All NBA? Are they doing center two fours and two guards? Is that is that how they do it? First NBA first team. What is like just best five? I don't know. They, 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 I, they need to start doing best like, five. They need to stop doing I, position yeah. stuff. Anyway. I don't know. So, so like, Damn, like Giannis, like, Giannis, Giannis might not make it because if you think if well, they put in, he might MB, have better, he might have better numbers this year than he did last yeah, year. Embiid and LeBron are definitely going to be in that front court, mm-hmm. and the other front court. If, if they say a forward, I don't, if he play enough, if he play fifty five games, Durant gonna probably get another spot. Yeah, or it, it could be Kawhi, but I think Giannis gonna get bumped to second team just because of 
the playoffs. Granted, yeah. these are regular season awards, right. but everybody's, <laughs> mem- everybody's memory. Oh, That's the true. wall, he can't shoot, blah, blah, blah. He'll be on second team all NBA more than likely this year. If I can ask you guys real quick, like quick fire, what are who do you who's your MVP this year? Harden. MB today. Go Harden. Like okay. if I if if the criteria was count the stats you want, I'm picking Harden because for the last twenty three <laughs> games, my, my man been lighting the league up. But everybody's gonna hold Houston against him. Okay. I mean, yeah. Then, okay. If you want to do that, yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. But, and then uh, we know it, when Kevin Durant comes back, it's going to knock Harden down some too. But right. as of today, you got to go MB. I mean, he hasn't been injured. He's been taking some low management. But as long as he plays, I think – I forget what the stat is, but it's like if you miss more than like 12 games, you would never win MVP. So it's going to be weird to see if MB misses more than 12 games, does he still win it or does LeBron just tear it up the rest of the way. So – so they're the only two who can win it. I don't think Harden can win it. I want him to win it. I think he's been robbed twice before, but I don't think he'll win it. Gotcha, I'm about, gotcha. I'm about to say, the only reason why we say Harden is like, just just imagine if they, if they never made the trade for uh, Harden. Like, with Kevin Durant getting hurt, what, what the hell would the Brooklyn Nets look like right now? Lottery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we, we hey, saw Kyrie we, we Yeah, you know what? You know, you know what a Kyrie led team going. Then with it, then with the injured, what, what I mean, then with the injured, yeah, with then with it hurt, and then and then you know, Karis Levert, well, I see he probably would have. Nah, I ain't gonna say what I want to say, because if he didn't get traded, he wouldn't got no physical. He wouldn't have found out he had someone's kidney, like, like, oh my god, so that would have been even worse. So he glad we traded, he got traded, but yeah, 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 they would have been, they would have, they would have been, they would have been down there, lottery, <laughs> <laughs> they been down. Oh man, be the, be the Brooklyn Magic. <laughs> Yeah, the Brooklyn funny. Pistons. Yeah, right. Yeah, right, right there, they'd be right there in the boat for real. Like, uh, I don't oh know. my gosh! All That's right, <laughs> our last, our, our, our last statement to, to defend. Uh, LeBron is the greatest GM of all time. All right, so he's four zero in All Star game. Man, we ain't even to acknowledge this, man. We, we, we're not going to play around like this. Jerry, Jerry West is out here, man. Let's not play around like this. So you saying <laughs> so? So you saying the LeBron James Heat teams, the Lakers teams, the Cavs team when he flipped this whole team? Mid season, you know, you think you think you think that GM helped? You think that was that was the GM or that was LeBron? I don't, I don't care. Jerry West, Jerry West scouted Kobe Bryant at, at eighteen, so he's gonna be the best player in the league. He was right. Jerry, Jerry West put together those Memphis grit and grind teams. He got Shaq to LA. Jerry. He got Kawhi and Paul George to the Clippers. He got Paul George demanding trades with no leverage. I mean, Jerry, Jerry West, the man. Come on, De- De- Devil's Advocate. He could have had Paul Gasol, Mike Miller, and Carmelo Anthony in Memphis. He chose to trade that pick like two or three years earlier. I mean, it's hindsight, but whatever. <laughs> he still he still could have had Melo in Memphis. Man, I so I have to I have to push back. I have to say I do think LeBron is the greatest GM of all time because I don't think I have ever seen. And it, honestly, this is a huge problem. This is like my only problem with LeBron is I don't appreciate how someone can come in and flip a roster top to bottom, essentially, upside down. The fact that one person has that much power and, and you're not even in the front office is mind-blowing <laughs> to me. And that doesn't, I mean, that doesn't, like, speak poorly on him. The fact that he has, I mean, everyone gives him that power. The league gives him that power. Right. So props to him. But for somebody to not just do that on one team, but on multiple teams, I'm like, I, it's mind-blowing because I think, People are trying to react to LeBron. People, I mean, you see those tweets that's like, all this just to take down this. And and to me, I actually, I mean, people are looking at Brooklyn right now, but I do kind of think it's the real story is you're trying to take down LeBron. Everyone talks about how elite playoff Braun is. And so, um, I don't know. I, I, I have to say that I do think LeBron is for that reason, but those are some great points about Jerry West. I think he, he definitely deserves a lot of credit there. Shoot, he got KD to go in the state. Every game changing move. <laughs> Jerry this, West put his hands. Was, was, was Jerry West? Yeah, that's fair. That's true. That's true. That's true. Except he ruined Miller's career. No, I was playing. That was that, that was Miller's fault. <laughs> Chasing the bag. That's Miller's fault. <laughs> but no, yeah. I mean, LeBron. Man, first off, first off, it don't matter who 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 draft against him. They how did they let him get Curry and Dame on the same team? Well, and you got to remember. No, nah, so y'all got to you got you got to remember the no. All Star game is friendship based. I ain't drafting no they, Kawhi, no All Star game. You not let no. you not giving me Kawhi or Gobert. Bro, you, <laughs> missed, 
<laughs> no, two girls I ain't drafting. You're you're missing the whole point. <laughs> if I go to a park, I know he the the, the dribble gun and all that kind of stuff. I'm not taking Kyrie with the first pick. No, that that, that way it goes that, down. That, that way it went wrong right there. He chose his teammate. Yeah, do you I mean, feel like he had to do that? Man, I ain't doing it. No, not man. <laughs> if, 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 if 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 you my dog, you gotta understand. I'm not picking you first. I want to win the game. I want this bonus chick. I'm taking MB. <laughs> It, it goes Yo, back to LeBron. He taking Curry. The, when it comes back to me, I'm taking somebody else. I'm not taking Kyrie first. I'm taking somebody else. I, you just he could have got Luca. I mean, granted, he didn't play worse in an All Star game, but maybe he'd play harder. You you gotta you gotta you gotta learn who's an All Star player, like an All Star game player. That, that's a, these are different categories. You Dame, Harden, uh, Giannis, Curry. Those are the guys you want. Every time, no matter what, I feel like I feel like everybody was crazy because they really drafted Kawhi. Like he was gonna play hard this year. He won MVP last year. He ain't playing hard this year. <laughs> I'm never. My, my, I don't care what it is. You know, you bro. All right, you saw how, you saw how the Jazz with the last guys drafted. Like Kawhi, if Kawhi wanted to start him, he'd be he'd be like, I ain't drafting Kawhi. I don't care. Nah, he down at the bottom because he not gonna play. He not gonna try. Like he he just out there just having fun. I guess. He don't smile. Like, Shoot. He guess he I mean, LeBron didn't even try. LeBron played 13 minutes on hit like four points. <laughs> yeah, yeah, LeBron, yeah, LeBron ain't try either. Yeah, yeah, that's true. He's out there making deals is what he's doing. Yeah, LeBron, LeBron, he knows why he's there. LeBron was on rest anyway going into the All-Star game. You know he wasn't playing in this. But you got to drive Giannis. If you don't, that's the first pick every time. Giannis, number one. And then if you if you get Giannis, next pick is Curry. Like, that's just what it is. And Durant, first off, <laughs> first off. So you don't even know how I feel about Kyrie. Like I am the president of the Kyrie Hater Club. So to okay. draft, so to draft Curry, I mean to draft Kyrie over Curry. Like you, you should have just said, "Hey, can I draft Dame and or can I draft Dame first instead of Kyrie?" Like, like that's 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 where I would have been there. Like I don't know, Kevin Durant. He don't need to be no captain no more. I think that was the first time being captain. <laughs> His team really didn't come out that bad. It's just the fact that you took Kyrie with the first pick. Like <laughs> if you if you take somebody else right there, like if you'd have took Curry, mm-hmm. it'd have been different because Braun already got Giannis. He ain't gonna take him beat now. Yeah, right. You the guy. Yeah, yeah. Now, to be fair, you know, be but, but, but KD still. can't draft Curry because he got to still take Kyrie. Mm-hmm. So I mean. That's true. Can I ask why you what why what the reasoning is for the Kyrie hater fan club? Why that is? All right, so it, it goes it goes way back to like for like coming into the league. You know, I'm not a I'm not a uh, handles guy. Like okay, when you when you sit here and you want to argue that Kyrie's better than whatever, don't say he got better handles. Why, what does that matter to me? When in the NBA you see LeBron take one dribble and go through the whole lane, y'all go the whole lane. <laughs> Luca and Jokic both slow. They go through the whole lane. Like they don't need the moves to get to the basket and score the bucket. Like don't don't argue me about handles. So that's that's the first thing. But when he was when he was uh, I think my whole thing really was Kyrie is like we always we always say like he's this you know he's a champion. He he, he did hit a great shot right. Mm-hmm. But it's like I say this all the time. If LeBron said I'm going to Charlotte when Kimball was there, or he said I'm going to Portland when Dame was there, like Kyrie would never have won. He would. He don't. He wouldn't have won over. He wouldn't have gotten to the playoff with, with the Cavs. <laughs> Dane would have been a champion. Kim Walker would have been seen on a whole different light. It's because you had LeBron, and then he had the audacity to say that Kevin were his best teammate ever. Like that, just all, all that kind of stuff. Just, like throwing shots at Bron when he know that Bron led him like to the final. Like he wouldn't go get there unless LeBron came back. Mm-hmm. I think that's just what it is. And everybody hype. You know, he is he one of the greatest finishers at the rim. Yeah, his lap package is crazy, but it's like. I don't want to hear about no handles. Wait, yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not playing any one basketball. I'm sure. gonna use some sage. Stop hitting on that man. Use <laughs> some sage. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not as much of a hater as I used to be. But mm-hmm. like, like I def, I definitely was on the side. I was like, John Wall better than Kyrie. <laughs> I, was, I was, I was, I was that argument in, in the early what 2012, 13s. I was that argument. Uh, hey, for real, he was, John Wall playing John two way after double double. And then, and then I was saying, I never said Kimba was better. I said Kimba and Kyrie, they same level. They the same level as far as they 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 gonna give you the same thing. It is that one had Le, one had LeBron and one didn't. I think that's would have been the difference for Kimba. And now that's you see, it. now you yeah. see him on Boston as a third guy, and he's going twenty. Nobody care. 
And that's I think that's would have been like that's would have been him on, on LeBron. Like he would have been, you know, I mean, whatever it is, but it is it is it is it's is more of that. It's more of like everybody like try to hi- overhype him, I guess. I guess the way Fair. it is. Fair enough. All right. That's the end of our show. Uh before we let you go, uh go ahead and shout out you know, all, all everything you do. Uh your Twitter, Instagram, so everybody can follow you. Yeah, so my Twitter is at L Gun with four N's. Uh all my I write from Mavs Moneyball, so all my all my pages or articles will drop there and be linked to my Twitter. Um in my bio is also the link to the uh the Blue Hardwood podcast that I co host with Brian Zillum, along with the gunshot that I co host with my brother Grant Gunn. Um so yeah, everything is attached to my Twitter. All right. Rashad, you got anything you want to save you out of here, man? Oh, no, man. Dope show. Thanks for coming on. We really appreciate it. Thank you. you Thank Thank you. Blow the finger guns out. Yes. (laughs) Hey, you (laughs) (laughs) funny. You guys are killing me. Uh, Appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. We we out. (laughs) 